On this first problem, we are going to draw three resonance structures for carbonate, CO32 minus. Let's start by counting up the number of valence electrons we need to draw these structures. Carbon has four valence electrons, oxygen atoms each have six. We have three oxygen atoms in this molecule, so that's a total of 18 for the oxygens. And then we have that negative two charge. Whenever we have a charge, a negative charge, that means that we need to add that many electrons. The negative two charge means we have two extra electrons. So that gives us a total of 24 electrons to work with when we're drawing this um, set of resonance structures. Carbon, because the carbon atom is first in the formula for the molecule, that means that carbon will be our central atom and we're going to arrange the three oxygen atoms around the carbon and we'll start just by using single bonds to connect the oxygens to the carbon. And we want to count up the number of electrons that we used just to put those atoms together. We have three single bonds. Uh, each one of them has two electrons, so that's two, four, six, and that leaves us with 18 more electrons. The next thing that we want to do with those 18 electrons is satisfy the octets for our outer atoms. All of our outer atoms have currently two electrons in that bond, which means that all the outer atoms want to have six additional electrons. Our goal here is to give all of our atoms eight electrons. So we give all of our outer oxygen atoms, um, they each get six electrons. That six times three uses 18 electrons. We have no more electrons left to work with, zero electrons. Let's take a look at our carbon atom. Our carbon atom has two, four, six electrons around it right now. It needs to have two more. We don't have any more electrons to give it. So that means that we have to pick a lone pair of electrons from one of the oxygen atoms and move the lone pair of electrons in to the oxygen carbon bond to make a double bond. Now, when we have a situation like this, where we have three options, for outer atoms that we could use to make the double bond. Um, we want to draw what we call a set of resonance structures that show all of those different options. So by that, what I mean, I'm actually going to copy this. Um, because we have three possible oxygen atoms that could be used to make that double bond, we want to show the possibility of using each one of the oxygen atoms to make the double bond. So one option would be use the oxygen atom on the left, one, one option would be used to, the to use the oxygen atom on top, and another option would be to use the oxygen atom on the right-hand side. And I'm going to fix those, I'm going to turn those um, lone pairs of electrons into bonds. Love these double bonds like that. So this is what we call our set of resonance structures where we're basically showing all of the different possibilities that we have for making these double bonds. Resonance structures are separated from each other with double headed arrows like that, not double arrows like that. We don't wanna use that type of arrow. It's specifically a double headed arrow. And this double headed arrow we use to just illustrate that relationship between the set of structures. Sometimes we also put square brackets around the whole entire set of resonance structures. Let's practice this again. Our next molecule that we're going to use is NO2 minus. So we want to start by adding up all of the valence electrons we need. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. We have two oxygen atoms. Each oxygen atom has six valence electrons, so that's a total of 12. And then we have that negative one charge. That means that we have one extra electron. We want to add that in as well. This gives us a total of 18 electrons to work with. Because the nitrogen comes first in the formula, that means that the nitrogen atom will be the center of the molecule and the oxygen atoms will be arranged around the nitrogen. Those um, two using or creating those two nitrogen oxygen bonds used a total of four electrons. So we have 14 electrons left. Um, now what we want to do is work on satisfying the octets for the outer atoms. We want to make sure that the oxygen atoms each have a total of eight electrons. So that means each one needs to get six more. In doing that, we used a total of 12 electrons, so we have two left. 
Now we want to focus on the center atom. The center atom has two, four electrons. It needs a total of four more. We have two more that we could give it um, from the valence electron, so we'll add that, but that's not going to be enough. We need to give this nitrogen atom another two electrons, and we'll do that by taking a lone pair of electrons and moving it in to the um, central, to form a double bond with the central atom. Uh, we have two options. We have either the oxygen on the left or the oxygen on the right. That means we can draw two resonance structures. So I'm going to show possibility number one, use the oxygen on the left. Possibility number two, use the oxygen on the right. When I'm picking which lone pair I want to use to make the double bond, it doesn't matter which lone pair I pick. So over here on this side, I chose to pick the lone pair down here. I could have just as well chosen this lone pair or this lone pair. It makes no difference. Remember, we want to separate these by um, from each other with double-headed arrows arrows, brackets. Oh, something I forgot with the first problem. We still do want to include the charge on, if there's a charge, if it's a polyatomic ion, include the charge on the outside of the brackets. I didn't do that for the CO3 2 minus up here. We'll add that charge. Uh, and then we have one more that we can do. So the last one is O3, that's ozone. Um, this has a total of three oxygen atoms, and each oxygen atom has six valence electrons, so that means 18 valence electrons to work with. This structure has all of the oxygen atoms connected in a line, um, like that, and forming those um, two bonds used four electrons. So that means we have 14 electrons left. We're going to begin by putting electrons on the outer atom. So that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And now all of our outer atoms have octets. And then we want to work on the octet for the central oxygen atom. The central oxygen atom has two, four electrons. That means that we want to give it four more. Two of the electrons can come from what we have left. We've got two left over here, and now we don't have any left at all. We've used them all up. This oxygen atom still needs some more electrons, so we can take a lone pair from either one of the oxygen atoms and use it to make a double bond. This is saying um, we should have at least two structures. Try to come up with a third. We'll see what we can do. So let me make this a uh, copy of this. And for structure number one, we're going to take lone pair on the left, and we're going to use that to make a double bond. For structure number two, we're going to take a lone pair from the right and use it to make a double bond. And um, I'm going to turn those into actual bonds. And let's see what we have. Now it says to try to come up with a third structure, but looking at this, I'm not sure how I could come up with a third structure without breaking some sort of rule um, in terms of an octet. Uh, oh, I guess maybe I have, maybe I have an idea. I have an idea of what I could do. So I'm gonna go back to the, let's see. Mm. No, actually, never mind. I thought I could use do a triple bond or something, but that wouldn't work. So never mind. I can't come up with a good third structure. I'm sure we can come up with a bad third structure, but I don't want to draw a bad structure. I've realized I've been completely ignoring the calculating the formal charge part of each one of these problems. So that's what we'll do. We'll just work our way from the bottom to the top. Calculate the formal charges of any one of the resonant structures. So let's um, always let's just do this for the first resonant structure in the set. For this oxygen atom right here, to calculate the formal charges, we're going to take the number of valence electrons, which is 6. We're going to subtract the number of bonds, which is 2, and the number of non-bonding electrons, which is 4. So that one has a formal charge of 0. For this guy right here, valence of 6, because it's an oxygen, that has 1, 2, 3 bonds, and it has 2 non-bonding electrons, so that's a formal charge of plus 1. And this one right here, six valence electrons, one bond, six non-bonding electrons, formal charge of negative one. Remember that the sum of all of the formal charges has to add up to the overall charge of the molecule, which is zero, and plus one plus a negative one adds up to zero. So that's perfect. Let's calculate the formal charges for uh, this guy right here. Oxygen on the left has six valence electrons. This one has two bonds and four non-bonding electrons. That's a formal charge of zero. Nitrogen in the center has a valence of five. This nitrogen has three bonds, two non-bonding electrons, a formal charge of zero. And oxygen on the right, six valence electrons, one bond, six non-bonding electrons, formal charge of negative one. 
This is an ion with a negative one charge. Zero plus zero minus one is equal to negative one, which is the charge on the overall ion. And then last but not least for carbonate, uh, oxygen on the left-hand side, six valence electrons, two bonds, four non-bonding electrons, that's a formal charge of zero. Oxygen on the top, which is exactly the same as the oxygen on the right. They both have one bond and six non-bonding. Six valence electrons, one bond, six non-bonding electrons. That's a formal charge of negative one. And the carbon, we have four valence electrons in a carbon. This carbon has one, two, three, four bonds. And zero non-bonding electrons, that's a formal charge of zero. All of the formal charges need to add up to a negative two. We have a zero, a zero, a minus one, and a minus one. That adds up to a negative two.